And then could it have an effect on the reversal of hair graying or slowing your hair going gray? And what other effects does it have on the body? Hi everyone, Lisa Tamati here and welcome back to my YouTube channel where we explore the science of longevity from a practitioner's perspective. So today we're diving into Mitosynergies BioCopper 1, also known as Kuni Moosebeer or Copper 1, which is a niacin complex and its proposed effects on mitochondrial function and the reversal of hair graying. Is that possible and does this help? So many of you, like me, probably want to slow down your hair going gray and I'm always looking for answers in that direction and this came on my radar recently and it's a really fascinating supplement we all know about copper and um, we all know that you know copper can get too high in the body and can be too low so we want to be in the right uh, levels but today I wanted to do a deep dive into a special type of copper, copper that's uh, mitosynergies by copper one which is uh, the nice and complex so I want to do a deep dive into that and could it have an effect on the reversal of hair graying or slowing your hair going gray and what other effects does it have on the body so we'll examine underlying biochemical pathways as usual I'll dive into the clinical data and potential safety considerations as well especially relating to the uh, zinc copper inter interaction and then testing some protocols so let's take a look under the hood and see what this biocopper one from Mitosynergy is all about and how it works. So Mitosynergy, the company, describes Biocopper One as the world's only bioavailable copper uh, supplement. It is also referred to as Kuni Mursbeer, which is a really difficult word to say, so I'm going to say Copper One, where copper is complexed with niacin, which is vitamin B3, to enhance the delivery of the Copper One oxidation state in the oxidation state so mitosynergy plus three um so mito functional uh, copper one is critical for two uh, major biological domains so the first is mitochondrial electron transport chain so the bioavailable copper supports complex four, which is the cytochrome C oxidase. Now, why this is important, you might know about the electron transport chain. This is in the mitochondria. This is what produces your ATP, right? And often we have dysfunction in our mitochondria, especially as we get older. And so this is a very important uh, aspect of it. So for the mitochondrial electrical uh, electrical electron transport chain i'm having trouble with my words today um and so bioavailable copper one supports complex four in the cytochrome c oxidase which is the final step in that electron transport chain enabling atp production and it's estimated up to 90 percent of cellular energy needs mitosynergy or this copper one so it's also important for melanogenesis and the hair follicles this is where the hair growing story comes into it so copper activates tyrosinase which is the key enzyme catalyzing the conversion of tyrosine to melanin and this is foundational to hair pigmentation and mitosynergy emphasizes that this compound's uh, collation process mimics how plants process copper maximizing its bioavailability and uh, so that's really an interesting thing for us to be looking at. So let's look at some of the clinical evidence and the mechanisms and how this could be possibly uh, working. So Mitosynergy had their own clinical trial. Um, it's a randomized double-blinded uh, placebo-controlled parallel study in subjects with persistent muscle or nerve pain, showing improvements in energy and strength and fatigue and daily discomfort using their BioCopper 1 supplementation. So that was a really interesting one. Unfortunately, detailed mechanistic endpoints weren't yet published, but it's a, a, a good beginning. Um, trace elements in hair grain. So in 2018, a clinical study found that individuals with premature hair graying had reduced serum levels of iron, copper, and calcium. So all three. Copper reduction was not statistically significant, but iron and calcium reductions correlated with the severity of graying. 
And this suggests that trace element status may influence melanocyte activity. So the biological rationale is that lower copper levels could reduce tyrosinase activity, compromising melanin synthesis, and moreover, mitochondrial dysfunction and oxidative stress are implicated in hair follicle aging and loss of melanocyte function. Um, so there's no uh, independent peer-reviewed studies directly linking this copper one supplementation to re, uh, to hair repigmentation, but there is that pathway that would suggest that it would be uh, a functional pathway for us to consider. So here's a breakdown of the key pathways whereby a copper one could intervene. So in the mitochondrial ATP synthesis, copper one is delivered to complex four of the electron transport chain, boosting that ATP production, as I said. And, and more ATP means enhanced cellular energy, including melanocytes, which are high energy cells. Uh, melanogenesis, so copper acts as a cofactor for tyrosinase, catalyzing conversion of tyrosine sorry, to melanin, and adequate copper may restore or augment melanin production in the hair follicles. Um, a reduction of oxidative stress, so copper-containing enzymes like superoxide dismutase, or SOD for short, reduce oxidative damage in the hair follicle stem cells and the melanocytes, and improve mitochondrial function further mitigates reactive oxygen species, potentially delaying follicle aging. So synergies, um, copper one may help with that. Potential influence on melanocyte stem cell maintenance. Um, so while direct copper involvement isn't established here, oxidative stress reduction and improved energy supply may help preserve melanocyte stem cells, which otherwise decline with age. So Mitosynergy suggests several practical applications for this uh, supplement. Energy and fatigue for individuals with unexplained fatigue, especially nerve or muscle pain. Some experienced improved daily function with Biocopper 1. Anti-aging through enhanced mitochondrial function and antioxidant capacity. The supplement may support general cellular vitality and potentially slow age-related mitochondrial decline. Uh, hair re repigmentation by restoring copper-dependent tyrosinase activity and supporting melanocyte metabolism. So theoretically, it could reverse or slow grey hair, uh, though this is still, you know, speculative and not enough peer-reviewed uh, human data as usual um, is there. But I take this for myself in, in the hope that it will be doing that. Um, so you may want to do that too. Um, as with any trace element supplement, though, careful consideration is essential, especially regarding zinc antagonism and copper toxicity. So the zinc copper antagonism, what's that about? High copper intake can interfere with zinc absorption and vice versa due to the shared enteric transporters and the metallothionine regulations. So zinc deficiency may lead to immune compromise, of course, or other metabolic disruptions. So for testing, like before you maybe start this supplement, you may want to consider doing some baseline serum copper and ceruloplasmin levels and your zinc levels just to see where they're at. And if copper is already high or ceruloplasmin indicates elevated copper stores, supplementation could uh, risk you know, being problematic for you from either neurological or hepatic effects. So maybe doing those tests prior to starting might be a good idea. Um, what I do is I take my zinc uh, four hours, at least four hours separated from the Mitosynergy Copper One, uh, just to make sure that there's no competing uh, antagonism there. But I do take the zinc in order to make sure that I have that balanced effect. And then I get my bloods done pretty regularly as well. So I can make sure that everything is remaining in balance. Um, and this is the same thing for zinc. If you only take zinc for a long period of time and you're not taking any copper, you could be you know, pushing the seesaw in that direction as well. Uh, so potential side effects, although Biocopper 1 is designed for bioavailability, over supplementation may still provoke sort of gastrointestinal upsets or in rare instances, transient neurological symptoms, especially in patients with Wilson's disease or other copper metabolism disorders, which are rarer, but it could happen. Um, so pre-supplement labs, so serum copper, ceruloplasmin, zinc, and perhaps the liver function tests as well would be good. 
and initiate it at the lower dose. So start on a lower dose and then reassess after eight to 12 weeks and see where your copper and your zinc balance is at and adjust it, you know. And if you have Wilson's disease, then that's probably contraindicated for this. Um, so what are some of the takeaways? So BioCopper 1 is a novel copper niacin complex designed for mitochondrial delivery and activation of tyrosinase. It holds theoretical promise for enhancing energy metabolism and supporting hair pigmentation pathways. Yet independent clinical evidence, especially for hair graying reversal, is lacking. Uh, and as clinicians, a cautious sort of approach to that and the monitoring of the copper sink balance would be really good. Now, how does it differ from the standard copper? So usually copper is connected to copper sulfate or gluconate or oxide. So this is um, Mitosynergy's Biocopper 1 is a, is unique in that sense in that it's uh, complex with niacin and it looks at how it differs from the regular copper supplements that affects on, and its effects on mitochondria and hair pigmentation. Uh, we, we discussed that above. And now I want to do a little bit of a dive into how it compares to the peptide, GHKCU, which you may have heard of if you're into peptides, you've probably come across GHKCU, uh, GHK copper, which is, um, you get it and it's a bright blue uh, looking peptide and this we you know we already know that this um, is used a lot for skin and regenerative medicine um, and so we're going to have a look at it at, at what's the difference what's the difference between biocopper one and is it sort of similar to the GHK copper or is it completely different um, so biocopper one is described as the world's only bioavailable copper one supplement so most copper supplements on the market like copper sulfate or gluconate or oxide supply copper in the oxidized form, Cu2 plus is the, you know, how it's written. And inside the body, this copper 2 plus must be reduced to copper 1 plus before it can be incorporated into critical enzymes like the cytochrome C oxidase in the mitochondrial electron transport chain or in the tyrosinase in the melanogenesis story. So here's the catch. So copper 2 is poorly regulated, highly reactive, and can generate free radicals via Fenton-like chemistry, which is why excess copper intake in this form is linked to oxidative stress and systemic toxicity. Mitosynergy claims that biocopper 1 delivers copper already in the copper 1 plus state, which is chelated to niacin, and this is significant because it bypasses the redox step, making it directly usable by the enzymes. And chelation with niacin stabilizes the copper 1 ion, reducing uncontrolled reactivity. So according to company data, this mitigates the common side effects of copper overload while ensuring that the targeted mitochondrial and en enzymatic delivery happens. So that's pretty exciting, I think, um, that we can get it in a bioavailable form that actually has an impact on the mitochondria and on the enzymes. So clinical pathways, uh, a clinical trial published in the Journal of Pain Research in 2023 tested biocopper 1 in people with persistent muscle pain and supplementation improved their energy, reduced fatigue and enhanced quality of life. Uh, the mechanistic highlights there were mitochondrial ATP production. Copper 1 is essential for that complex 4 function in the electron transport chain, which produces over 90% of ATP. The melanin synthesis story, um, the copper is a cofactor for that tyrosinase, catalyzing the conversion of tyrosine into melanin. And for antioxidant defenses, copper zinc superoxide dismutase neutralizes superoxide radicals and adequate copper supports this enzyme, producing, uh, protecting sorry, melanocytes and mitochondria. For hair follicle stem cell protection, by enhancing ATP and reducing oxidative stress, biocopper 1 may help preserve melanocyte stem cells, slowing the grain. Copper deficiency in hair graying evidence. Now the clinical data on premature hair graying show reduced trace minerals, especially the iron and calcium, um, with some studies noting that low copper levels um, could be a part of that. While not all findings reach statistical significance, the biological rationale remains strong. Reduced copper leads to reduced tyrosinase activity, leads to reduced melanin synthesis, leads to gray hair progression. So restoring bioavailable copper may reactivate melanogenesis. 
though it's important to note we need more studies. So how it differs from GHKCU. Now, um, GHKCU is a naturally occurring tripeptide that binds copper. Uh, it's used topically in skin creams as, and as an injectable peptide for wound healing, for anti-inflammation and for hair regrowth. Really good for wrinkles. Um, GHK delivers copper into cells, but primarily exerts its effects through gene modulation, turning on repair genes and down-regulating inflammatory pathways. It also promotes collagen synthesis, angiogenesis, and dermal remodeling, whereas the copper-1, the biocopper-1, in contrast, is not a peptide. It's a copper-1 niacin complex designed for systemic mitochondrial support. Its main actions is biochemical, not genetic, by directly fueling mitochondrial re respiration and that tyrosinase uh, activity. So in simple words, GHK copper is a signaling peptide, think gene expression, tissue repair, cosmetic and regenerative uses. Biocopper 1 is a bioenergetic copper donor, ATP production, enzymatic cofactors, systemic anti-fatigue, possible, possible hair pigmentation support. So both have distinct therapeutic niches. Um, GHK copper for localized tissue repair and skin and hair applications, biocopper one for systemic mitochondrial and trace element support. And again, for safety with the zinc, do the testing prior um, to make sure that you know, you know where you where you stand and that you haven't got a contraindicating uh, Wilson's disease. Uh, watch out for things like GI upset or fatigue or unexplained neurological changes. Sometimes there's a transient sort of the Herxheimer response at the beginning, so start low with your dosing. Uh, and to summarize, biocopper one is distinct from normal copper salts because it delivers stabilized copper, the biologically active form bound to niacin aimed to maximize mitochondrial uptake while minimizing toxicity. It differs from the GHK copper, the peptide, which acts primarily as a gene modulating peptide for tissue repair and hair growth, whereas bicopper one supports systemic mitochondrial function and enzymatic activity. So that's it for today. I hope you have enjoyed that. If you want to find out more, check out the links below uh, and give it a try. If you, as long as you haven't got Wilson's disease and maybe you want to check your zinc levels in your body, Personally, I've been on the supplement now for approximately five weeks and I'm, you know, do a lot of athletic pursuits. Um, I've noticed my, I'm 56 years old, going on 57, my mitochondria seem to be firing better. I seem to be able to run faster. I seem to have a little bit more endurance, a little bit more spark, a little bit more energy than I've had in the last few years. Um, and so I'm really, really pleased about that. I have a little bit more power in the gym. Um, so these are just anecdotal stories from my life. Um, and that's really been, you know, noticeable for me uh, on the hair growing front too early to tell, um, hoping, <laughs> hoping it's going to slow it, <coughs> even reverse it combining it with other things, which I do. Um, and when you take that sort of holistic approach, putting in a number of things, I've done a number of uh, podcasts or uh, uh, videos on reversing hair graying and possible supplements that you may want to put into your regime in order to slow that process at least and maybe even reverse it. So this would be one of the things on my radar if that's high up on your priority list. So that's it for today. Please give us a like, give us a subscribe. Love doing this content for you guys. It takes a heck of a lot of time and effort to do all the research to keep up on it all. So I really appreciate you subscribing and sharing it with your family and friends if you think this could benefit other people. And do check out the links down below in the description if you want to try Mita Synergies Copper One in this bioavailable form of copper. So that's it for today. And thanks very much. We'll see you again soon.